Hi folks, uh, my name is Jimmy Dowdu. I'm the founder CEO of Vault Hill, where we're building a human-centric metaverse. And recently we launched a campaign called The 22, where we're working and featuring 22 NFT artists, world-renowned and famous that create physical and digital art, right? And what we're doing with these 22 NFT artists is projecting to the world the beauty about NFT, art, and all of the creativity that lie in. And I am honored, I am glad, I am happy, I am ecstatic to actually name our first headliner, um, someone who I now call friend, in the crypto space we say friend. Um, and it's no other person that, than UAE's first NFT artist. And without further ado, I'm Rita Seti. Please introduce yourself. Amazing, thank you. That's such an amazing introduction. And first of all, I just want to say, um, fantastic that we're connected. I believe that, you know, what's meant to be is meant to be. And I think the universe and the metaverse has brought us together. Absolutely. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to working with Vault Hill. And I'm super excited that we're gonna be doing something amazing in Vault Hill. Awesome. And I can't wait to tell everyone all about it. We'll, we'll drip it bit by bit. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's let's dive into it, right? So, you know, a, again, a, a lot of folks out there are like, who's Amrita Setsi? You know, um, what is your background? Where have you come from? You know, um, you, you've come from traditional finance and apparently we worked at Barclays a couple of <laughs> years ago in another lifetime. Um, so I, I guess it's just, you know, talking to the folks out there you know, how has that transition been for you? You know, at what point did you figure out, I'm gonna go follow my dreams and jump into the space of creativity, arts and NFTs? Well, as you rightly said, I am a banker turned artist and then an artist turned UAE's first NFT artist. Um, and that's been an amazing journey for me. Uh, but I also found that my background in banking is what's helped me understand the, the blockchain and the NFT space so well, right? So I started, I was actually born and brought up in Kenya, uh, started my career in, in London with Barclays, as you rightly said, back in those days it was uh, Bow Water House and now it's like One Central in, in Knightsbridge. And I love the fact that we have that connectivity, yeah. right? So it's about how finance is so much, you know, well, it's about how you can move from two different worlds yep. um, and still take your experience with you, Absolutely. right? And you, we talk about, or you talked about um, the level of creativity. I believe, you know, following one's passion is so important in life, yeah. right? You know, I started off as a banker, I turned into an artist, but when I was younger, I always was very passionate about art and creativity. And life takes you where you where it needs it yep. to, to go. Absolutely. So I then, you know, for me, it's all about following your passions and being able to achieve your dreams. And I think sometimes we get so bogged down in the rat race, and especially I would say the way the centralized world is organized, we tend to get so caught up in that manner. Yeah. And I found that what I happened is a couple of years ago, I left the corporate world to go for more entrepreneurial calling. Nice. Um, and when I did, I took that break, which I think that many people don't have the opportunity to do. And by doing so, I went inwards mm. before I went outwards, right? So I went in and I found my inner voice. So, so let's take a step back to unpack what you mean by inwardness. You yeah. know, I know you're big about, you know, spirituality, you know, mindfulness, all of that stuff, all of that energy, you know. So. What do you mean by that? Let's, you know, let's unpack some of those that aid into your creativity. Yeah, absolutely. So when I went, you know, I think a lot of the time we get so distracted by the noises around us and our lifestyle. And in that moment and just being able to kind of have that quiet moment and be able to connect with myself, that's when I discovered or rediscovered A, my love for art mm. and tapped into my creativity. But also I actually created my own art genre hey hey hold on hold on <laughs> we're, 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 we're gonna dive into this you know yeah. let's, let's let's still just paint this picture of who amrita is yeah. right and ju just before we go into that yeah. you know i was gonna i was gonna yeah. you know lead okay, into that yeah. but you know 
again, let's look at your background from yes. a professional perspective. You know, you went to University of the Arts. Yeah. You did a mixed, um, oh, yeah, you know, mixed that. course in, that, in yeah. art. Was that to buttress you being in yeah. this space or was it just, hey guys, I want to go do this because I feel like my passion is leading me to there, you know, because yeah. I feel like a lot of people want to know that to get into the space as well, is there any qualifications mm. or certifications you need to do? Yeah. But, you know, it could have just been a personal quest for yeah, you, absolutely. you know. No, it's a good point. So I think basically what happened is I was working in the financial world for a very long time. I started my career off in London in Barclays and then I moved uh, to London, uh, to Dubai, when in my in my sort of late twenties, and there I worked as wealth manager, you know, in HSBC. And that took me to my life in Switzerland as a HSBC private banker, um, and then I moved back to the UAE because you know I just love Dubai as much. Love as the I sun. Love, I, love the, <laughs> I love the sun. You know, I grew up in Kenya. It was something that is very close to my heart, and I also find that you know, for me, Dubai just provides such an amazing yeah. platform. Um, I love Switzerland and, and all the countries that I'm associated with and I think because I'm such a global citizen, I find that being in a place like this just allows you to access all of that. I came back and worked for a couple of other you know, big financial institutions mm -hmm. until that moment where I wanted to go and have a more entrepreneurial calling. Right. right? So I actually originally left the corporate world because I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial actually in the financial world yeah and in that time that's when you know you know that's when I had some time to think but when I when I then found out that I was just like yes this is it I'm gonna be an artist um, you know that was amazing right and I thought okay but I didn't think I was gonna be a full-time artist <laughs> I thought I was just it was just gonna be a side hustle yeah, kind of thing. yeah. and so I thought, okay, well, let me indulge my side hustle. Nice. And that's when I went to do a course in Central St. Martins yeah. in London. Yeah, so, so just going back to, you know, your transition from the financial services to this world we call, you know, Web 3.0, Metaverse, NFTs, art, yeah. you know, how has that been for you? How has that transition been for you? Yeah, so I mean, you know, just a little bit of a background on myself. So I started my career always in finance. I've worked in some of the world's largest financial organizations, you know, across Dubai, London and Switzerland. And I would say that, you know, I was always and always working in the private wealth management space. Um, so across, Shabby yeah, money. which is a bit ironic because <laughs> I actually did a degree in economics in and a master's in development economics and I had always always wanted to actually go and you know help empower you know the poor really in in sort of developing market countries mm -hmm. uh, but a bit of a sidebar my both my parents at the time worked for the UN I really wanted to work for the UN and I wasn't able to do that nice. um, because they have certain rules about different you know things so I actually originally wanted to do that and I ended up empowering the rich over empowering the poor <laughs> But anyway, that's uh, that's how life takes you, right? Yeah. And so what I did is I had my career in banking, uh, in the financial services world, and then you know you spend so much time in that corporate environment that I wanted to leave originally to do something in a more entrepreneurial side in the financial sector. Yeah. So I made that jump, um, and when I did, that's when I took some time off, and then that's when I. You know, I went to things like, you know, uh, Central St. Martins to do a degree in, um, in mixed media. Mm. And then I actually created my art genre. From there, what ended up happening is I was so unsure because I was still in the financial world. I was still trying to then become, have my own financial services sort yeah. of entrepreneurial business. But this thing kept coming up. And so what I did was I kind of did it on the side, yeah. um, but I did a very stealth operation because, nice. you know, me trying to explain to my financial friends world that I was going to become an artist, everybody just kind of laughed at me, <laughs> right? They were like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, and so I, I kind of did that, but when I got, and because when I created uh, my art genre, I knew that I had created something that nobody had done before. Yeah. So my natural instinct from being from the financial services world was to copyright it. And I remember going to certain people and they were like, nobody kind of cares about your little art project. <laughs> um, but I knew I had created something yeah. unique. 
And the minute I did copyright it, I then did, I showed it to one person, which then snowballed into, you know, where we are today. Yeah. Basically, I ended up at Art Dubai in 2019, where I did a live activation installation. Nice. I, you know, won an award at World Art Dubai uh, the following month. And then, you know, I ended up painting some murals in very prominent positions in the UAE. And so then that's just... when Expo found me. Hey, hey, um, hold on, yeah. hold on. I, I know the journey and the yes. story is a lot to yeah. tell. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, it, it's exciting as well. Let's yeah. one more step before we jump into your yes. career. Let's talk personal. Yeah. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. I'm married to half Indian, half Swiss, and we met in Switzerland. Ooh, it was okay. very romantic, so talk about Bolt Hill and the romance <laughs> district. You know, district. <laughs> um, I think you should have a platform, actually, where pre train station platform where people can meet. Ooh, hey, so hey, guys, hey, guys, we're getting ideas bit here. A bit of alpha. <laughs> um, so we actually met on a train station platform, and we were both going to the World Economic awesome. Forum. Awesome. Um, but I was, yeah, I'm born and brought up in Kenya. I'm third generation Indian Kenyan. So what does that mean? A bit of a history lesson. Uh, the Brits came, they colonized <laughs> India, and then they, they took a lot of Indians to build the railway in Africa. And if you think about the geographic location of Kenya, yeah. it's a really good entry point into a predominantly landlocked continent. So having the railway that would then be built from the port of uh, Kenya into the rest of Africa, and then a lot of Indians stayed you know, in Kenya and my family most became entrepreneurs, but my family became lawyers and architects. Nice. So, you know, I've got a lot of love, a lot of love for Kenya. I'm Kenyan, um, but then also I'm British because there was a very strong British yeah. um, influence all my life. I went to very British schools in Kenya and uh, and I'm obviously and I'm also a British uh, citizen and so just by nature of it of just being able to move I've been very very fortunate to move around the world to have so much exposure to so many different cultures and I think that exposure is is something that's definitely reflected in my art style as well absolutely and I could I could resonate on a personal level with yeah. your story being African, Nigerian myself, and also British. Yeah. You know, um, mix of the cultures, the people, the food, the heritage. Yeah. I, I relate to all of that yeah, on a personal absolutely. level. So I think this is also yes. <laughs> this part is of like, this, you know. The, the I, energy I, I, flow. Yeah, absolutely, like absolutely. We absolutely. understand each other. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so let's delve into your work, yeah. right? So you started off with the sound bites. Yeah then the alpha bites yeah there's something about the bites right yeah, it's all and then the there's the meta mission coming on yeah, yeah. you know on your roadmap so you know just talk to us about your journey you know the creativity the murals and difc yes. the augmented reality that there's just so much to explore i kid you not like you know when, when we met you know i was like Jeez, man, like this is yeah. this is one person. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. I think I need to create my creative cap on. So but, yeah, just yeah. To, just talk to us about you know you know how you've how you, how you journeyed from the start with you know the copyrights of you know the first you know um, project you did mm. to where you are now and absolutely. you know uh, we'll talk about the challenges in a bit, but yeah, you know l let's just get your story and your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So. Basically, you know, as I said, like when I had that moment to myself where I had the time to reflect and go inwards, um, that's when I tapped back into my creativity. And I actually created my own art genre, which I called originally called voice note art because it was literally me speaking a voice note. Um, and I like it because it is about something where I tapped into my inner voice and then that outer voice came out and it really expressed, I think, who I've probably always meant to have been. Yeah. So I called it voice note art. Um, but then since then, I've now rebranded it to Soundbite because A, I think it just sounds cooler. And, it, it and does. B, it does <laughs> sound cooler than voice note art, literally. And, and then it's that play on word of BYTE, you know, sort of by that very strong connectivity to sort of technology yeah. as well, as well as being able to use sound in art. Because one of the great things about NFTs is that you're able to take something that, like art, that is typically a very static, um, you know, 2D sort of visual experience yeah. and able to then layer in multiple dimensions 
from sound to visual experience to actually experience whether it's through augmented reality or virtual reality. Yeah. Right. And so I then created the sound bites and I started off with cities. Right. So that was easy enough because you have. So I, you know, in a nutshell, what a sound bite is is I say, you know, I first record a voice note. Yeah. Uh, so I can either say a place, um, a phrase. I can even say your name. Basically, I can say Jimmy. Hey. Or we can say Bolt Hill. Ooh, and we okay, capture the shape okay. and structure <laughs> of the sound wave. You see what I'm there nice, what I'm doing? Nice. We capture the shape and structure of the sound wave. And then each of the lines of the sound wave, I mm -hmm. draw to match the meaning of the word. Nice. Right? So for example, you know, maybe we can do another interview where I sit down and I interview you and you tell me about the story of you and what makes you you. Yeah. Because I think it's all about what I love about NFTs and Web 3.0 and things like the metaverse is it's our opportunity to take things that we have been using and seeing all our life and take a different look at it. It's Absolutely. about taking, putting a, literally a different lens on it, yeah. right? So, you know, when you take a portrait, so you think about the Mona Lisa, yeah. you know, they had to try and paint the Mona Lisa to capture the essence of, you know, the subject. Absolutely. And for what I do is now it's like, instead of me just taking a photo, it's I'm taking your voice print. So yeah. you're saying your word. Then I ask you about your life you tell me about it and I capture the essence of you and your history mm. and who you are through sound and you make it into an artwork, right? So That um, sounds intense. It is. Like uh, the, the creativity process because you, you're, you're taking technology to a whole new level and then you've incorporated augmented reality into that. So yeah. you, you've taken a, a soft aspect of something, the voice and the sound, you've projected that into, or captivated feelings. Yes. You've expressed that visually, and then you've created an immersive experience of that. Like, yeah, like hold on, hold on, yeah. like, what's in here? Like, you know, what will you have, to, you know, two <laughs> eyes, two hands, like, what, what's going on? <laughs> I, think, I think the key thing is, for me, it's always about understanding, you know, what tools you have, and I think, what all of this has done is allow me to use technology yeah. as a tool brush, right? So you're 100% right. Once I had that, that sound bite, I was like, how do I express the dynamic nature of it? So by layering on the experience like augmented reality, mm. what I've been able to do is to be able to then bring that out and actually make it into a multi-dimensional experience for the user. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people are sitting there out there and going, okay, you know, okay, yes, NFTs, but first of all, they're confused about the name of it, the word of it, <laughs> but what is it that NFTs, I think, what are some of the most significant aspects of NFTs? It's the fact that, you know, it's not just obviously that, you know, people think it's all about making lots of money. It's yeah. all about, you know, harm to the environment. For me, it's like, no, it's, um, it's about being able to take something, mm. take that artistic level to a whole new experience and actually show people, for example, what we'll be doing in Vault Hill and in the metaverse and in terms of VR, where we are today and yeah. how the world has changed Absolutely. and how the world is changing and it is a bit of a glimpse into the future and i think that sometimes people can be very scared by it yeah. but my thing is just to embrace it yeah. right um and then i think you know when we talk about um for for example the soundbite um and and so to kind of go back to your question is for me it's about telling a new story yeah it's about telling a new narrative, okay? And so when when I create the soundbite and I create the story, you know, we get so stuck into the world we are. So it's a bit yeah. like my story was about me. So when people used to say the word Amrita, they used to think banker, they used to think insurance, they used to think, you know, wealth. that wealth <laughs> management. I hope they still think wealth. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they used to think all of that, but I decided that I can create a new, a new narrative for me. Yeah. So I've literally, you know, you can take control. Life is like a blank canvas. Yeah. You're the artist. If yeah. you want to change your tune, if you want to change your, the images that people have about you and their yeah. mind, you're able to do that. Mm. Um, and so now, you know, look at people see me as an artist, as an NFT artist. 
And it's about being able to change the, you know, I would say the, you know, the pathways in your brain mm. that anything is possible. So this Absolutely. is why following your dreams, creating new narratives, introducing new characters into the story. I would have never met you. Well, maybe we would have met yeah. in our old life, but we would never have this interaction in our new life. So, and and so this is what I try to do with my art. Nice. Um, and for example, like with the DIFC mural. Yeah. And well. and you know, for, for let's even take a human centric approach, yeah. right? And you know, we talked earlier about you know your mindfulness, your spirituality, and how that concept of creativity comes in, you know, well-being as well. And if, if I look at the Meta Maison, for example, mm. and your thoughts of, you know, how you want to take that grand and a couple of things we're already working on for yes. a couple of events coming up that, you know, are going to be mind-blowing, mm. you know. How, how do you process all of that? You know, you also have a personal life. Mm. You have friends from your old life. <laughs> well, when I say old yeah, life, no, no. but your former life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you have friends like myself that, are, yeah. you know, um, in this industry and space, you know, mm. how do you put all of that together, you know, and still have time to create, Yeah. you know? I think it's important is understanding your long-term vision and just being able to, to balance things. And I, I think also, as, as hard as sometimes is, is not to take yourself too seriously, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, and to enjoy the creativity. So what I love to do, so, you know, for me, I always try to think, where can I push the boundary next? You know, so from my sound bites, um, I then decided to, you know, anything is possible. I decided to create my own language by hey. going into, you know, the alphabets, right? So it's the alphabet plus my sound bites equals the alphabets. Alphabet. Um, and so, you know, the point is, is that we can create what we want to yeah. and enjoy that creation. And I think where, um, what keeps me going is to say to myself, okay, what's my end goal? Um, you know, I, I want to, you know, as an artist, um, you know, we talked about the, sorry, I'll say, you talked about the Meta Maison, yeah. right? So again, what has NFTs and the Metaverse and Web3 done for artists? is gone and taken us outside, um, you know, you're able to scale an artist. So before, yeah. there was only so much an artist can produce in a year, yeah. for example, and maintain their rarity and scarcity. Yeah. Um, and then working at, with galleries as well. Exactly. And so when you look at a fashion house, like a house of Dior, a house of Gucci, or all of that, is that you're able to create an entire fashion house. Yeah. So what I'm going to be doing with the Meta Maison is I'm creating you know, the most prestigious end-to-end -end NFT art house with myself as a creative director. Nice. Because, you know, in order for me to balance all of this is that I want to still be able to make, you know, get the overall high-level creative concepts, whether it's alphabites, sound bites, whether it's building meditation sculptures in metaverses. I want to be able to do all of that. Yeah. Um, but also, I have a lot of brands, a lot of celebrities, a lot of um, people coming to and saying, we want to get into this space. How, How do we do it? Yeah. And so what I want to be able to do is take them from the art and the ideation right. through to the technology, which includes things like all these wonderful experiences, whether it's VR, whether it's augmented reality, and just help them grow, yeah. create community, as well as utility. And all important. of that sits together. And I think that something like being able to have, um, you know, me to be able to have access to platforms like Vault Hill, um, so that when we, I do create uh, my art and my crazy concepts, yeah. I can just make them even crazier Absolutely. in the metaverse. Absolutely. And it, hey, it's spot on and takes me to the, the next part, right? You know, there's Web3, there's NFTs, the metaverses, right? Mm -hmm. What, what features do you, would you say are missing? What opportunities are there? Yeah. And most importantly, what are the challenges you've personally experienced that you could share, you know, to, to the folks out there? Yeah, so I think, you know, I, I first think, I think, you know, I think there's, you know, hu I mean, I think this is it, is overwhelmingly amount of um, opportunity. I always say this, the only thing that limits you now in the Web3 space 
is literally your imagination because with technology everything is possible literally yeah. everything is possible um, and so uh, so I would say there's masses of opportunity I think where the challenge comes also for just personally as an artist is you know I have land in multiple metaverses like yep. you know obviously in Vault Hill um, but you know Decentraland Sandbox you know Crypto Voxel so there's a lot of metaverses coming up and to be fair everybody is also like there's a lot of metaverses people are building um, there will always be the first few ones so yep. first mover advantage which I do believe um, you know Vault Hill has and also uh, worlds that then focus on different vibes so like for example with Vault Hill it being very you know human centric uh, being able to kind of really follow and, and track some of the real values of hum humanity from you know romance to curiosity to vitality and that kind of speaks a lot to me yeah. and I think that just like in this world today we have lots of different lands you have you know, different countries and, and different continents and all those different continents and countries have different vibes and yep. they have different food. I think we're going to be seeing that within the metaverse Absolutely. as well that come out, right? Yeah. And so the challenge is always just making sure that you're, you know, even the same thing in the real world, you can't be in all the countries all at once. Exactly. So picking the right metaverses, um, you know, each vibe one has got even a different idea stylistically, but I still do think there is a little bit still of a race to the top. Yeah. Um, and I think that certain people are still uh, concerned because they don't know which metaverse to choose. Um, but you know, the way I see it is, it's just like art. You've got yeah. to, you've got to, you've got to experiment, right? So Absolutely. like, you know, being able to do things and you know, and also, what is that metaverse bringing to you? They're bringing you a beautiful gallery, well curated. Um, is it very hyper realistic? Is it semi realistic? Is it, you know, kind of very pixelated? Um, so I think it's just a matter of being able to choose which one. I right. think. Okay. Um, from an artist perspective, and then I think from a from, you know, from an outward from I would say from a mass adoption perspective, it's amazing how many people have heard of the metaverse. And then how many people have actually been in the metaverse? Yeah, so, so that's, that's interesting because I remember, um, I think in February we were in Sharjah for um, the Women in Technology, MENA region, and you were speaking. And I think you asked the question around how many people in here have a MetaMask wallet. And I kid you not, we looked around the room and it was, what, about five people out of 100. Yeah. And again, it's about adoption. And I, I kid you not, you know, part of the challenges is the the entrance how do you yeah. come in you know you, you need to create a wallet remember 12 you know seed phrase depending on what platform mm. you create your wallet you know it starts to go about you know the term interoperability which is you know how do i use this asset in that metaverse or this community or that nft platform and all yeah. of that and you know with your art are you solving some of these challenges making it accessible and if you are how are you doing it yeah, I think, you know, any new um, technology is always hard for people to adopt. But I think let's just go back to the days where nobody had online banking. <laughs> and, she was and the bank, yeah, oh my exactly. days. <laughs> but, and that's happened, I mean, in our li lifetime, right? So, yeah. you know, eventually it does take a bit of time. But for me, opening a wallet literally takes 30 seconds. Um, you know, uh, remembering to write down some words and keeping it safe. Okay, fine. I mean, look at some of the complete everyone there's so many different ways in which you can sign into internet bank banking i think the biggest thing is just learn by doing yeah i think it's really important to educate people i think it's really important to make people feel that it's not scary yeah. and to take people by the hand and and to to just show people i think that there's a massive desire to actually you know adopt yeah. um but i do think that one of the from an artistic perspective as well is um people are still unsure about this feeling of physical and digital right so a lot of people expect when they receive an nft yeah. they still they can't they can't understand why they're just receiving just a jpeg so i think this has given rise to things like the digital yeah. right where you you get a d digital asset an nft but you also get a physical one yeah. so i think for me it's just about being able to help people adopt it 
by giving them this option of when you do get an NFT, yeah. you get a physical or the other way around, you buy a physical, physical artwork and they get a digital, whichever way there is. Yeah. And I think that has been working for me um, because then people find um, they feel that they've got additional value. Absolutely. And what I find is the minute they actually f put it into their wallet is when they understand this concept of digital ownership. Um, and then they're starting to understand that actually that digital asset is different to the physical asset and you can trade that digital asset a lot much more easier Correct. than your physical. Correct. Right? And hey, you know, the, the Alpha Byte collection you released a couple of weeks ago, I'm a proud OG member, you know, Absolutely. I bought a couple. So, you know, again, supporting the cause. But ultimately for me, it's also trying to relate with the creativity of the artist, right? Starting to collect, starting to understand, you know, where is the thought process of this art? Where is the, what's the genre of this art? You know, how do you start to immerse yourself in the artist's creativity and mind? And it takes me to, you know, the 22, you know, you headlining, you know, with us and, you know, I, I guess it's, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks are like, oh yeah, okay, now I'm Rita Seti as part of the headlines. Yeah. But, you know, what what are you, you, you know, you're, you're curious to know, what are you creating or what are you creating? Yeah. You know, what are you building? You know, do you want to drop a little nuggets yeah. here and there? Do you want to drip feed it or do you want to, do you want to expose it? I think, I think what I want to, I, I think, you know, when you talk about the artist, you know, the creativity concept is for me, I kind of like to be like the first or, yeah. you know, one of the great craziest or being one of, you know, I want to be the first one where people are like, wow, I've never seen that before. I think that's what I like that reaction. Yeah. So whether I painted the world's, one of the world's largest augmented reality mural at the DIFC, which is 20 meters long by 15 meters high, whether I, you know, create um, a collection made out of my own alphabet, which has got 145 NFTs, which is with a hundred, like a fractionalized sculpture yeah. that goes with the 145 physically fractionalized NFTs, um, or whether I've created my own art genre with sound bites. Um, what I'm trying to always do is to just push the limits yeah. and to actually do things that people well, I literally like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. So what I want to do is with the project for 22 is I want to also do something that people have never seen before. Nice. They've never experienced before, but they have also, um, you know, they didn't, th you know, but then no. So I want to produce something that people have never seen before. They've never experienced before, but in a way that connects not just the, the, the physical world to the digital world, yeah. but also incorporate, you know, spirituality yeah. and consciousness, Important. which is all part of this human centricity, which I, what I love about Vault Hill. Nice, nice. Um, so, yeah. so j just going back to all of what we've talked about and, you know, focusing on the alphabets and NFTs and the conceptual or the perception that it's a JPEG, like you said. Yeah you know, what, what utilities, what benefits do people get if they get a piece of your sculpture? Yeah. You know, I think yeah. a lot of folks out there are going to be like, hey, okay, what do I do with this? Yeah. You know, so if you shed some light on utilities, benefits, that would be great. So yeah, so what I wanted to do with the Alphabytes was have a real 360 approach, I would say, to an NFT collection because NFTs have become more than just a JPEG, Absolutely. right? So what I first did is I created a, a sculpture, which was made out of 144, 145, you know, unique slices of a sculpture made out of aluminum, treated in gold, silver, and copper. And so I created 145 fractionalized piece, physically fractionalized, and then I created 145 NFTs. Nice. So when you bought one of the NFTs, you get a slice. You got it a slice. And so that is, I would say, the artistic concept. Mm. Then, and, and that that is unique because it's playing with this digital aspect. Yeah. The second layer that I wanted to add on, and, and this is where, you know, this is where NFTs have taken a really big, a big turn. And I think sometimes fine artists or, you know, true artists 
they they feel they put they feel that their art is enough of a utility. Yeah. But I believe in actually going with the times because you know you have NFT projects which are purely only about utility, less about Correct. the art. But what I've done is I created a project where we focus on the art, but also added you know a community as well as utility. So awesome. the 145 are the they're the OG. You know, I would say 145 OG kind of investors in Amrita, which I am very happy to believe that you are one of them and welcome you into the OG Bike Club. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this 145, um, they have, it's a community of some of the top business leaders in, the, it, you know, across both the traditional space and the crypto space. Nice. And so this is the way I actually want to also merge the two worlds together mm. because I think you know it's in a way it's like having a meta investor club you know you've got yeah. people who are you know in the top of their game in the top of the community they're also like my mentors yeah. as well who are helping me build to my next project yeah. which is the meta maison so the owners of the my nfts also not only become part of this community but they get different utilities yeah. you know they get access to allow lists on other people's projects nice. um, they're able to attend events and VIP events you know I you know any of the commercial projects that I do with brands they'll be able to be associated awesome. with it awesome. and also you know being able to have you know maybe first look into projects like my, the projects that I've got for Vault Hill nice, nice. and then with that project once I did that, I layered on top of that digital, like physical and digital wearables. So I create physical hoodies, nice. uh, t-shirts, uh, buyers that actually come to life and they are augmented reality. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a couple. So, you know, we're, we're, we're currently in Amrita studio. We're going to take you guys on a tour shortly to yeah. see the amazing piece of work she's doing, the technology incorporated augmented reality. I kid you not, you know, I was mind blown and you will be, you know, yeah. so stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. And so then you layer on the experience of augmented reality, whether it's in the fashion world as well. And then we take it to the metaverse mm. um, where there's a sculpture in the metaverse of the actual artwork. And I think that, you know, what I want to do as well is that, you know, going forward is You've got all of that, but what I want to do with Vault Hill in the 22 is we'll have a 360 approach again. Mm -hmm. We will have um, the, the physical, the digital NFT. We will have something physical with it. We will have something in the metaverse. But now what I want to do is I want to connect to the humanity of it and, you know, bring in consciousness and spirituality. And I think that hasn't been done before. Hey, hey. Um, I I'd love for you to talk about it, but yeah. hey, let's not give it all away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> let's let's exciting. let's let's drop it out. You know, the guys will start to see it. But I, I you know, we, we've talked about the concept. Um, I'm ecstatic. I'm excited about you know yeah. what we're working on together, and I can't wait for the world to see it. Like it's it's mind blowing. <laughs> so I think the question that I would ask to the next artist is, you know. What do you want people to know most about what you think nice. the wonders of the metaverse are? Hey guys, you heard it here. We're gonna let the we're gonna let you know who the next artist is and answering that question around the wonders of the metaverse. Yeah. And just before we wrap up, Amrita, any final words to the good folks out there, your fans, your community, people that don't know anything about you yeah. and want to come into the space? Vault healers, biters, yeah, <laughs> you know, OG fans, exactly. you know, any final words? I would say follow your dreams, understand your passions and know that where your focus goes, your energy flows and everything happens for a reason. So go find yourself. <laughs>